in ordinary time. Our Mass presider today is Rev. Father Ronnie Crisostomo, SVD. Our Eucharistic celebration and devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus will now begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We take the votive mass in honor of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, just as we also have our devotion every Friday to the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. We ask, we implore the merciful heart of Jesus for our world, for all those who are suffering, and uh, we implore His mercy for our world, especially people who are in uh, great suffering and those who are in who are in war to celebrate worthily this Eucharist we ask God's mercy and forgiveness You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Clothe us, Lord God, with the virtues of the heart of your Son, and set us aflame with love that conform to his image, we may merit a share in eternal redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, 
striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one Spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God, his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. We now honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say immediately that it is going to rain, and so it does. And when you notice that the wind is blowing from the south, you say that it is going to be hot, and so it is. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? If you are to go with the opponent before a magistrate, Make an effort to settle the matter on the way. Otherwise, your opponent will turn you over to the judge. And the judge hand you over to the constable. And the constable throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed day, a blessed evening to all of you and also those fellow worshippers in other parts of the world joining us through this live stream. I would like once again to focus this reflection on the first reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians 
we've been reading the from this letter several days already until uh, next week and uh, as i've said one of, among the many concerns of the uh, this letter of paul to the romans or to the ephesians is for example today the question of unity and peace within the community, the church. And uh, it has been a constant appeal of uh, the apostles, also uh, Paul, this concern for the unity of the community, of the body of Christ, that is the church, that uh, every member should strive to work for this edification of the church as body of Christ and should not we should not allow division and sectarianism to uh, to influence our relationship it was an experience in the early church that there were, of course, like now also, that uh, there are, were those who interpreted, for example, the teaching of Jesus or the message of Jesus differently. And, of course, there are those who interpreted this according to their taste or to support their own agenda so uh, paul here in the letter to the ephesians insists on the so-called foundations of this unity in the church and uh, for example one of the uh, the concerns here is the uh, the division caused by the heresies, meaning uh, a uh, misinterpretation of the doctrine or the teaching of Jesus, and this caused division within the followers of Christ. So with this. Uh, Paul insists that the source of unity is not something like a legislation that uh, would assure this unity, but rather he starts with the with the presence of the Spirit. No, the presence of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus and of the Father in the community, which they have experience in other words he was telling them that be docile listen to the teaching of the promptings of the spirit of the lord jesus and of the father and be aware of his presence and uh, this for example part of the uh, uh, the teaching today is the insistence of uh, Paul on the importance of our doctrine, our profession of faith, which we profess as baptized. So uh, with this, it helped in the formulation later on of what we call now the creed, now what we uh, uh, pray every Sunday the Nicene Creed or the Apostles Creed for example so one of the the sources of our unity is our docility, openness to the spirit and at the same time adhering to the correct doctrine of the Lord Jesus there unity is assured now and uh, 
this is a concern even now of every every generation of Christians you now because we notice that uh, we bring with ourselves our own sinfulness our own biases and that is the problem you now when we allow our capriccio our own estimation of ourselves that we are uh, on the right track that we are the correct in the correct one and we uh, we think that uh, we have the monopoly of the truth etc and we do not listen to the prompting of the spirit many times this is the cause of dissension in the community so the letter to the Ephesians insists on the unity the unity of in our faith no, that is founded unity that is founded in Christ in his teaching in the truth of Jesus Christ that uh, he himself has called us in baptism to be part of this one church one spirit and we are gathered under a one father the father of all in other words the foundation of unity that Paul is insisting is on the reality on the truth of Jesus Christ of God not a unity that is legislated or a kind of a, a an accord only of individuals or groups that let us settle this now that up to here is your right your privileges etc it's more than that it is founded on Jesus Christ no in God so we we realize therefore that unity is first and foremost a gift from god but it becomes a reality also when persons and communities are willing to cooperate with god and allow god to be the basis and foundation of our lives of our decisions when we are truly unified, united with Christ, we are truly in communion with Him. There is the source of unity. Communion with Christ flows in our communion also with one another, with our community. In the world today, there are many calls of, for unity. Let's be united here and there. I think it's a, a noble aspiration because without this, we cannot live in peace. But unity from the perspective of Christian faith is not a unity at all costs but rather the call of, for unity is not be, that is not based on truth for example can never be a true unity a unity that is a call for unity that is not based on truth on authentic human values of sincerity for example of justice equality then unity that unity is farce. It may turn out to be many times the call for unity as self-serving. So we ask then the Lord that as Christians, our faith, our communion with Christ may lead us to work and promote true unity in our family, in our communities, in our society. 
This is the message of the Lord through St. Paul, especially based on his experience working with particular community like the Ephesians, the community of the Ephesians. May the Lord bless our church, our communities, our parishes, especially in this year that we are trying to to grow in this synodality, no? to grow as and journey together as a community of brothers and sisters in Christ. May our participation again in this banquet of the body and blood of Christ be the source of our unity. Amen. The Lord Jesus tells us to watch for the day of his return. Let us come to the Father in prayer, watching and waiting for the Lord's return. For every prayer, let our response be, Prepare us for your kingdom, Lord. Prepare us for your kingdom, Lord. That the church may respond to the call for conversion and renewal. We pray. Prepare us for your kingdom, Lord. That people of goodwill may work together to put an end to war and hatred, oppression and injustice. We pray. Prepare Prepare us for your your kingdom, kingdom, Lord. That we may become more aware of the presence of Christ among the poor and the suffering people. We pray. Prepare Prepare us us for your your kingdom, kingdom, Lord, Lord. that the seek may be given strength and hope. We pray. Prepare Prepare us us for your kingdom, kingdom, Lord, Lord. that our friends and relatives who have died may experience everlasting joy in the company of Jesus. We pray. Prepare Prepare us us for for your kingdom, kingdom, Lord. Lord. In silence, let us pray for our other intentions. We pray. Prepare Prepare us us for for your your kingdom, kingdom, Lord. Almighty God, listen to our prayers. Open our eyes to your presence all around us. Make us closer to you each day. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. source and love. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that these our sacrifice, our prayers, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, Father of mercies, who, because of your great love, with which you loved us, with untold goodness gave us your only begotten Son. Grant, we pray, that being perfectly united with him, we may offer you worthy homage. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that won over to the open heart of your, the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. fund of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith The 
for us we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope Onesto, our bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection especially those we remember in this mass and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of our unity, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May it partakers in your sacrament of charity, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that we may con be conformed to Christ on earth and merit to be co-heirs of his glory in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We now have our uh, exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and our devotion in honor of the Blessed of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we pray especially for peace in the world. We invoke the merciful heart of Jesus to touch the hearts of leaders to find peaceful ways and means to to solve their defeatedness. Sacred feast, 
Praises to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Sacred Heart of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with deepest reverence we adore you. You are worthy of the love and adoration of all the heavenly spirits. We unite our adoration with theirs. Honor, love, and thanksgiving be to you, Sacred Heart of Jesus. Praised be the sacred heart of Jesus, inexhaustible fountain of all goodness. May the most sacred heart of Jesus be loved everywhere. Praised be the benevolent heart of Jesus for the boundless graces that have flowed and shall continue to flow into the lives of those who trust you. All for you, sacred heart of Jesus. Praised be the gentle heart of Jesus for the love which so often refreshes devout hearts with consolation. May the heart of Jesus be praised, adored, loved, and thanked at every moment, even to the end of time. Praised be the ador adorable heart of Jesus, loved, formed, and enriched with heavenly graces by the Holy Spirit. May the sacred heart of Jesus be known, loved, and imitated. Praised be the loving heart of Jesus, so generous, pure, and full of grace. May the heart of Jesus, burning with love for us, inflame our hearts with love of you. Praised be the royal heart of Jesus, victorious over death and sin, triumphant over the living and the dead. Praised and blessed be the sacred heart and the precious blood of Jesus in the holy sacrament of the altar. Praised be the heart so poor and yet so rich, for having despised all earthly riches, for having renounced all earthly honors. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like yours. Praised be the obedient heart of Jesus, which hungered for the fulfillment of the divine will, which thirsted for the greater glory of God 
and the salvation of all peoples. Heart of Jesus, increase in us faith, hope, and love. Praised be the generous heart of Jesus, which did not seek its own glory, patient heart, which willingly bore the greatest insults, unselfish heart, which longed for and lovingly embraced the cross. Heart of Jesus, help us to be generous, patient, and selfless. Sacred Heart of Jesus, teach us to love you with our whole heart, and grant that according to the little strength we have, we may imitate your sublime virtues. With Mary, let us adore, thank, implore, and console the heart of Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Arnold Jensen's favorite prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I adore you as the Son of God, and through the mediation of your most sweet mother, I beseech you, send me from the abundance of your loving heart the grace of the Holy Spirit to enlighten my ignorance, purify and sanctify my sinful heart, and confirm me in holy love. This I ask of you through the love of the Father and the Holy Spirit, through the abundance of your infinite mercy, and through the merits of all your saints. Amen. Amen. In the silence of our hearts, let us present to the loving heart of Jesus our needs, prayers, and intentions. May the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief vanish before the light of the Word and the Spirit of grace. And may the heart of Jesus live in the hearts of all. Amen. Amen. Oratio Imperata Merciful, Merciful and, and compassionate, compassionate Father, we confess, confess our, our sins and, and we humbly come, come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, 
Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungso, pray for us. Saints Arnold, Jansen, and Joseph, pray not in us. Pray for us. Given them bread from heaven, containing in itself all sweetness. Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your of your passion. Grant us, we pray. So to venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may ever feel within us the fruits of your redemption. You who live and rule world without end. Amen. Together we pray, blessed be God. Blessed, blessed be his, his holy name. name. 
Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Kindly be seated for an announcement. Masses for our departed loved ones on October 31, November 1 and 2 are as follows. 6.30 a.m., 12.15 p.m., and 6 p.m. For Mass intentions, envelopes are available inside the shrine as well as through our online Mass intentions at www.bit.ly slash Shrine Mass Intentions. Thank you, and may God bless you always and in always. Please rise for the final blessing. We have celebrated God's love. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Blessed.